So before uh, launching a major movement, Gandhi provided the British another chance to accept his demands. And he raised the 11 demands to the British government. These, are, these came to be known as Gandhi's 11 demands before the civil disobedience movement. So once the Purna Suraj was declared, Purna Suraj declaration was made, then Gandhi gave January 31, 1930. This he gave them one month time to agree his 11 demands, failing which a huge movement will be launched. And uh, these were the 11 demands. Reduce the expenditure on army and civil services by 50 percentage. Because most of the Indian revenues were going to finance these expenses. And it was not useful for the Indians, but only to the British. So he demanded that they should reduce the expenses on army and civil services by 50 percentage. Most of the civil servants were British and they were investing back the salary into Britain. So that was also not useful to India. And then he demanded total prohibition. Prohibition means ban on alcohol. Demanded total prohibition. Then he demanded reforms in CAD department. So CAD, CAD reforms were another demand. Popular control of issue of arms licenses. So he mentioned about the Arms Act of 1878. Indians, uh, under which Indians were no longer allowed to carry arms without licenses. Or to sell or manufacture arms. So Gandhiji demanded that there should be popular control of issue of arms licenses. So these arms licenses should be issued not by the British government, but by the popular legislatures and the ministers responsible to those legislatures. So Gandhi uh, also argued that this taking away of arms from Indians has had made them unmanly. They, they were no longer capable to challenge the authority when it was uh, abused. See, so if at all British abused their authority arbitrarily on Indians, even then, Indians are unable to challenge it because they have become unmanly due to the lack of access to arms. That is a point made by Gandhi. He also requested the government to release all the political prisoners under a general amnesty. Then there was a postal reservation bill pending with the parliament. And he asked the British to accept the postal reservation bill. So it was in favor of Indians introduced by the Congress members in the legislature. And uh, it was not only confined to political demands, he requested the British to reduce the exchange rate between British pound and Indian rupee. So it was during that time fixed by the British government and not by the free market. He also requested for textile protection to reduce the taxes to the textile industry of India and increase the taxes on imports and demanded to reserve coastal shipping, not the high seas but the coastal coastal shipping to be reserved only for indians and not the british and for the peasants cause he demanded that they should reduce the land revenue by 50 percentage british should uh, demanded the british to reduce land revenue by 50 percentage and by then uh, this uh, salt tax was a major concern because salt was used by all the sections in the society and it was a major part of every food item in india so gandhiji demanded the british to abolish salt tax and by then, salt was a uh, salt trade was under the monopoly of the government. So he demanded that uh, the government should abolish its monopoly in salt trade and allow other companies to participate in the trade so that the price of the salt will decrease. So these were the 11 demands made by Gandhiji to the Viceroy. And a deadline was given January 31, 1930. So these demands were rejected or unanswered by the Viceroy. So then uh, the Congress decided to launch the civil disobedience movement. This was the second major movement, nationwide movement launched by Gandhiji in India, civil disobedience movement. And this was the fourth major movement in India, Sadeshi movement, home rule movement, non-cooperation movement, now civil disobedience movement. And the uh, movement was initiated with the Salt March or the Dandi March. So Dandi is a coastal place in Gujarat. So Gandhiji travelled by foot from Ahmedabad to Dandi, 240 miles and made salt at the Dandi coast, breaking the law. So during that time, no one else was allowed to manufacture salt or make salt out of ocean. That was a monopoly of British and all of them had to pay a tax for the salt. So this, was, this law was broken by Gandhiji at Dandi after the 240 mile march from Ahmedabad. And the march was from March 12 to April 6. So almost one month it took for him to travel from Ahmedabad to Dandi by foot. 
and since he broke the law uh, gandhi was immediately arrested by the british and before uh, being arrested he had planned a uh, raid to a government salt work called the rasana salt work so picketing of this the rasana salt work was planned by gandhi but since he was arrested the the rasana salt work picketing was uh, led by sarojini naidu on behalf of gandhi ji and since uh, gandhi ji was arrested the other plans were sanctioned by central working committee of the congress cwc so they began uh, planning these schemes one was the non payment of revenue in rayotwari areas so they were disobeying the tax laws non payment of revenue in rayotwari areas peasants and landowners refused to pay revenue as you know in rayotwari areas it was directly paid by the rayots or peasants who cultivated on the land and there was a no chaukidara tax campaign in samindari areas so wherever the samindari system of revenue prevailed where the samindars paid the revenue there the campaign was different it was a no chaukidara tax campaign so both the samindars refused to pay the british and uh, peasants refused to pay the samindar and by this time the movement had spread to almost all sections of indians that is why even in tribal areas they broke forest laws instituted by british as a part of civil disobedience especially in the northeastern region filled with the forests they broke the forest laws on timber collection minor forest produce collection etc or grazing of animals all these laws were broken as part of civil disobedience and the uh, civil disobedience movement happened throughout india in tamil nadu or madras region it was led by c rajagopalachari who later became the chief minister of tamil nadu in 1935 so rajaji led the uh, salt march from uh, the inland place to a coastal place called vedaranyam in tanjavur district of tamil nadu so there he uh, broke the salt law and another important incident associated with the uh, civil, civil disobedience movement in madras was the chulai mill strike so what the question is asked chulai mill strike is associated with the, which of the following movements so it is associated with the civil disobedience movement and in madras so in malabar region that is in the northern part of kerala which was then part of the madras state the, uh, the rebellion or civil disobedience movement was led by a gandhian called k kelapan who also organized the vaikam satyagraha movement associated with the temple entry and as a result of this movement uh, lower caste were allowed to enter temples in travancore state so in andhra region associations called shibirams became the headquarters for civil disobedience movements in odisha it was led by another gandhian called gobal bandhu choudhary who broke the salt to close in odisha coast but in inland areas there was no coast to manufacture salt so they, they resorted to other tactics like in assam the kachari villages kachari villages in assam broke forest laws in large scale and among all these provinces it was bengal that saw the largest amount of largest number of participants and the largest amount of violence as well in order to suppress the movement so there was no single uh, major national movement in which bengal was not the major center it was a major center in almost every movement except probably the second phase of revolutionary movement so uh, then we come to central india in bihar it was completely land locked so they tried to manufacture pond um, salt at a place called nakas pond in a pond at nakas they broke the salt law by small scale creation of salt from that pond till be a salt lake and uh, within the tribal belts of central india large scale militancy was going on as part of civil disobedience movement so it was not completely peaceful so uh, in uh, chotanagpur area the tribal belt the movement was led by somra maji and bonga maji tribal leaders and one uh, curious one important incident that took place was as the tribal campaign was going on they started manufacturing illegal liquor especially samdal tribe started manufacturing illegal liquor as a part of civil disobedience so they even claimed that gandhi has gandhi had asked them to break all the laws so they were blocking the laws for liquor and one of the uh, most active participation in the movement came from peshawar so in peshawar it was led by a disciple of gandhi khan abdul ghafar khan so a huge tall man he was a pakhtun and he was known as the frontier gandhi and in, uh, i think in 1988 he received the bharat ratna 
even though he was a citizen of Pakistan. He was a person who fought against the partition of India. And in 1947, he said that... Uh, the congressmen had betrayed their brothers in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, that is his place, in Peshawar. Because they did not want to be left to the league. And in fact, uh, during the 1940s, when the campaign for partition was going on, and uh, since this place, Peshawar was a stronghold for uh, Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan and his associates. So, but they were also peaceful, like uh, Gandhiji. So then they were beaten up. Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan was beaten up by goons of Muslim League there. So that was a major incident in 1940s. And he started a mandri called Patan in support of civil disobedience movement in Peshawar. The mandri was called Pakhtun. And uh, the, the major, uh, I mean, target group was Patans. So Patans were the target group of the, uh, the mandri called Pakhtun. And the, the, he created a voluntary brigade in order to participate in the civil disobedience movement. And also for other constructive activities. They are called Kudai Kitmadgars. Or the servants of God. Kudai Kitmadgars. And since their uniform was red shirts, they were also called red shirts. So called a red shirt movement. And it was not a militant force. They were also uh, engaged only in peaceful protests. He actually had a huge support in that region. When finally the elections were conducted post 1935. Even though it was a Muslim dominated province. Actually, the International Congress won there due to the efforts of Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan. And Muslim League was defeated there. And later, after independence, the Pakistanis treated him very badly. And India gave Bharat Ratna to Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan in 1988 or 89, just before his death. Now, who were the other foreigners who received Bharat Ratna? One is Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan. One was Nelson Mandela. Did Mother Teresa receive Bharat Ratna? You should check that. Who are the foreigners who received Bharat Ratna? One is Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan. I think three, or, three of them have received Bharat Ratna. And uh, during the civil disobedience movement, there was a separate uh, campaign in coordination with this movement in Manipur and Nagaland. So Manipur was a princely state then, but Nagaland was under the control of British. So the movement there was led by a person called Jado Nang. He established a uh, cult called Heraka cult. He was actually caught and hanged by the British. But his associate was Gaidin Liu, a lady called Gaidin Liu. She led the civil disobedience movement in Manipur, Nagaland areas. And she was caught and imprisoned for a lifetime by British government. But later, uh, when the, in 1946, the first provisional government of India, I mean the 1946 government and the Constituent Assembly was formed. So there was a government under the Prime Ministership of Jawaharlal Nehru. So, when that government came to power, they released Rani Gaidin Liu. And it was Jawaharlal Nehru who gave the title Rani to Rani Gaidin Liu to praise her activities in the civil disobedience movement. And last year, I think uh, several tribal museums were created in different parts of India. It was in current affairs. I think the museum in Manipur is named after Rani Gaidin Liu, Tribal Freedom Fighters Museum. And several other forms of organization like uh, Prafadu Fairies. Vanar Senas, Manjari Senas. So Vanar Senas are uh, association of children. Not very small children, but adolescents. And then Prabhat fairies. They will travel in the morning announcing things. And uh, Manjari Senas. All these were used to mobilize the masses during civil disobedience movement. 